This is the deadliest tier 10 in World of Tanks Blitz. It's known as the FV4005. Yeah, yeah, the 183 deals 1300 damage with a single shell. You know what the 183 can't deal? 1640 damage in a burst. Yeah. The 4005 is insane. It's by far a tank that you do not want to meet behind a skilled player's hands on the battlefield. But, even though this is such a deadly tank, it does feature its fair share of downsides. Like, yeah, it's pretty fast, going at 40 kilometers per hour, and it's even got super speed boost, but the turret is 14 millimeters thick on the front, the sides, and the rear. That is so bad that any tier 4 can overmatch every part of this tank. I'm pretty sure any tier 1 can overmatch any part of this tank's turret, which is obviously not good, judging that the turret is the size of a freaking tank itself. So, yeah, the 4005 definitely comes with one major drawback, and that is the armor. Everything else about the tank is great. The pen, the DPM, the accuracy is even pretty good. It's just the fact that that armor is terrible. But there's a way to combat that, and hopefully in today's video, today's guide, will help you out. The first thing that we should talk about are the provisions. The major one being Spall Liner. While this vehicle is not going to bounce any shells, running Spall Liner will at least save you a lot of the hassle from dealing with high explosive. It's going to take away 20% of damage from high explosive shells. So that means anybody firing HE at you, whether it's an E100 or even a 183, is going to deal 20% less damage. So a 183's alpha goes from 1300 to like 1100 or 1000. It's still a big hit, but it's not nearly as bad as what it previously would have been. The second spot you want to take a look at are your consumables. Now, there's three really good options here. You've got improved engine power boost, you've got shell reload boost, and you've also got reticle cali. Now, personally, I don't run reticle cali. I know there's a lot of people out there that do, but for me, I find it more important to be able to get in and out of position with the 4005 because obviously being able to leave a position very quick can save you in a tank that has no armor being able to aim in faster sure it might get you a little bit more damage but i'm usually about survivability the other consumable which is shell reload boost is absolutely mandatory what this does is it makes your entire clip a percentage faster on dumping out the shells, 30% faster to be exact, which is absolutely massive when you put that number into actuality with a four shell autoloader. So yeah, let's see what we can do in this first battle. Up against us, we have, let us take a look. IS-7, T-57 Heavy, all right, I mean, as of what I see, they only have two heavies, so that's not too much to worry about. Now, as you can see, the 4005 is quite fast. It's based off of a Centurion hull, and I guess the major reason why it's not really slowed down is because even though it's got this massive turret, which you'd think would weigh a lot, because the turret only weighs about 14 millimeters worth of armor everywhere, it's actually not that heavy at all. It probably weighs less than the average normal turret. Now, we've spotted the IS-7 crossing, okay. That's uh, a bit of news. We also see that the Sheridan is at base C. Now, the thing about the 4005 is that you don't want to put it in a position that you you know isn't going to go well. So the first thing I do in the 4005 is I try to put it in a spot that I know I'm safe. And obviously, flat ground on this side of the map, especially when nobody's here, is a pretty safe proposition. So we got the IS-7 off to the side already, and this IS-7 looks like he's going to push the O, which means we can put on our shell reload boost, get one, get two, and we weren't able to get any more out, but we do have the Waffenträger off to the side and the 57 Heavy, which means we can get one and two into the 57 Heavy. With that, we were able to bring a full health team into... Uh, a lot less than full health, let's be real. This is where the 4005 does deal that insane damage. Now, for some reason, the entire enemy team is camping in spawn. I don't actually know why that is the case, nor did I expect that to be the case, but we're going to take full advantage of it. The first thing I'm going to do is get behind this, uh, well, let's shoot the 183. Obviously, I don't want to deal with the 183, so that's a tank I'm going to shoot at. Then we got the 57 Heavy, who appears to not be looking at me, which means we can get our final two shells out. With that, we just broke probably 3,000 damage, and this is what the 4005 can do, yep, 3,200 damage. So two clips from this vehicle into players that, let's be real, definitely deserve the clips for camping and spawn, and uh, now we're in a pretty solid chunk of damage. Now, the bad news is that my team is not doing very well. 
In fact, they're doing quite the opposite. They're doing really, really bad. The first thing we're going to try and do is, uh, well, I want to clear that 57 Heavy, but at the same time, I'm just going to try and cross over here and get a clip into this Sheridan. There's one shell into the Sheridan, two shells into the Sheridan, three shells or not. That was a bit unfortunate, but we're still able to get that fourth shell out into that Sheridan, making him a one-shot, and that's actually really important. All right, well, let's reload again. We do have that standard B pushing me. Hopefully that, yes, the Yo does get the clear. Now I'm kind of hoping that Yo helps me out in the 4005 because I'm probably going to need it in the next couple of seconds. Not exactly sure what the enemy team is planning on doing, but there you go. The Yo helps me out. And with that, we turned what was a very possible defeat into a victory. I will take the blame for that one shell on the Sheridan, though. That was definitely on me. Let's see. Is the 57 still here? Oh, he went all the way into spawn. Very interesting. Alright, well at this point, all we need to do is activate our super speed boost. You can see we are easily going 45, and this is where having that super speed is so nice to be able to get towards your opponents. Now, are we going to deal any extra damage? Uh, yeah, we might actually. It looks like we could get a little bit extra out here. We got the side of the 57, and there you go. A pretty easy clear. This first battle was a good example of where I like to play the 4005. You'll notice, even though it might have actually been more beneficial for me to drive the tank towards medium side due to the placement of the enemy team, I went towards heavy side. Now, normally, obviously on maps that like Himmelsdorf, I don't know if I'd suggest to drive the 4005 heavy side on Himmelsdorf, but on a map like Mayan Ruins, where, oh my god, that was loud. Holy crap, Wargaming. Oh my god, that was... <laughs> I might have to, um, I might have to mute that in-game. Either way, what I was going to say, the reason I went heavy side on Mine Ruins is because the majority of teams go medium side, and when I saw the majority of the enemies spotted on medium side, it gave me the idea that nobody was pushing towards the other side, especially once we saw that IS-7 in mid. So that's the major reason why I did that. But for the majority of games, you really need to use the opposite of what the enemy's going to do. So if they're going to go one way, you should probably go the other in a 4005. You should take advantage of your mobility and try and get a very easy clip on an unsuspecting target. The thing about this vehicle is, yeah, it does have a decently long clip reload, but it isn't that long. People don't realize that this tank's clip reload isn't too bad for the sheer amount of damage you're able to get out. So as long as you're able to get one clip out and back in the cover, by the time somebody gets to you, you're probably going to have that clip ready once again. So we've already been able to get one. Oh, that was very unfortunate, but that's all good because we're going to get two and three. There you go. That is what I'm talking about. And even though we only penned three of the four shells into that uh, VK, we full health killed him. I mean, think about that. We just, all three of us here just full health killed an enemy tank in a matter of seconds. I mean, that is insane when you think about it. Now we got the enemy FE2 and 5B in the back, and I can't deal all too much to him. Um, trying to think of how I want to combat the situation. Now, I have not even used my shell reload boost, which is the crazy part. For now, we're just going to wait here, and... That's honestly, I think, the smart decision, because we know they have a 183 in the back, and I don't really want to deal with that. There's the FE2 and 5B again. Let's go for one shell into the FE2 and 5B. Two shells into the FE2 and 5B, and there you go. There's a thousand health off his tank, and not only that, but we spotted him, so he lost uh, an additional chunk just because of spotting him. All right, well, at this point, we know that this game's going pretty well for our team. I've been able to deal a large chunk of damage, and uh, what I'm going to try and do is cross over towards heavy side, and I'm going to see if we can get some extra damage into the enemies over here. So we got that prog off to the side, who's getting some decent clips into my teammate, but what I'm hoping to be able to do is push this enemy WZ-114. I could give less of a crap if that C-30 shoots me, because we're going to get one, we're going to get two, we're going to get three, and we are going to get four into this W. Z, and I'm hoping that my, oh boy, my super conk is useless is what he is. He bounced the WZ, which means I'm going to lose an absolutely crap ton of health, but, well, actually, we're probably going to die because I don't think we're going to get Yeah. If that super conk had simply just pushed with me and uh, pens that WZ a single shell, we wouldn't have died. But because he didn't know what he was doing, we did die. Post-editing droodles here, I should add, as a footnote, you can't always expect teammates to support you. Even though I really wanted that super conk to help me, at the end of the day, that was my fault for putting myself in that position.
Well, here's the crazy part about that battle. Even though I didn't do amazing because of the fact that I did push super aggressive, I still did 3,872 damage. And that is kind of the example the 4005 makes. Even though, in that situation, it looked like I did a 40% YOLO, which was definitely somewhat of the case. I was really hoping there that my Super Conk was going to be able to push and clear that WZ. If he had, which now that I see his percentage, it makes sense. But if that Super Conk had simply pushed and just gotten... Well, he did push, but he bounced the WZ. If he had penned that WZ and uh, that guy had not been able to shoot me for 460... In return, that T30 would never have killed me, and we would have been completely fine. Unfortunately, sometimes when you rely on teammates, they do fall apart. But that's kind of the risk you have to take with the 4005. I wanted to showcase one game where we played a bit more passive in the Mine Ruins battle, and this game where I played very, very aggressive. You can see these two different playstyles work very well. The 4005 is a great tank for staying passive at the beginning, like I did, and then using that mobility and clipping potential to deal insane dumps of damage damage, like 1,730 into that WZ-111-14. And even though I did die and possibly killed myself, you can't make the disagreement that I still did almost 4,000 damage and probably gave my team an incredibly easy win, not only murdering that VK-72 out in the open with the help of my YAG and T-30, but then as well annihilating that WZ-111-14 who was giving my super conk and team some trouble. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This was hopefully a good guide to help you out on understanding how to play in the 4005. It's not the easiest tank. It's in fact one of the hardest tanks, but if you use it right, it can be an absolutely fantastic vehicle for carrying battles. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more like it, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.